Everybody, it's Ty Inspire and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode of Heart to Heart. And today I will not disappoint you. You know I won't. <laughs> I have somebody here that I think that you're really going to enjoy listening to her story. Her name is Jazara. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> you're welcome. Yay. Yes, we're so excited to have you. So tell us where you're from. So I am originally from North Philadelphia. Yes, I do specify North Philadelphia because Philadelphia is a big city. I'm from North Philadelphia, mm -hmm. but I moved here to Ghana just a few years ago after okay. traveling back and forth for a while. Okay. But I'm here now. Yay. Jeez. We're happy to have her. Yes, we are because this girl is a powerhouse. Let me tell you, boss, babe, all that, all the things, okay? <laughs> I got five words, don't try it. <laughs> right, exactly. All the things, so listen, so first let's talk about travel because I love travel. My audience knows I like to start with talking about travel. So tell me about your travels. Where have you been? Oh my gosh, I love traveling. I personally believe that a lot of people work for a lot of things, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever is your judge, whatever makes you happy in life is cool. I literally work to travel. That's it. So <laughs> it's like and my favorite thing to do is to travel for concerts. Mm -hmm. So it may seem crazy to somebody, but if my favorite person is playing in England, I will get a ticket and that's, that's where I'm going to go. Yeah. Oh, Marcus Miller is in England. So I'm going to go to England. Oh, Jamiroquai is in Spain. So I'm going to go to Spain. That's right. But I really love traveling. I just love to see other environments. I, I have a little thing. I'm just looking for balconies, beaches, and food. That's right. So it's like, where's the food? Yeah. Is there a beautiful view? Yep. And where's the beach? That's so if a country has a beach, I'm trying to be a part of it. That's what's but, up. But um, I have been to, and since I'm a fashion designer, I've traveled around the world for um, different shows. So I've been to like the UK and Europe and mm -hmm. Amsterdam mm -hmm. and Tanzania mm -hmm. and Nigeria mm -hmm. and Ivory Coast. Yeah. And I'm trying to make it over to the Spain area, like where Spain and Greece, like that's the 2023 mission is to get over there because I haven't did any of that yet. I haven't did Italy, Greece, Spain, and it hurts me. <laughs> so next year, I'm really trying to like gather my mind together. I want to do Portugal. Oh my gosh, I want to yeah, go so bad. I really do. I've done Italy. You'll love Italy. So what's the eating like in Italy? It is amazing. I want to go to Italy and gain Italy? five to seven pounds. You period. will. You will. Okay. My, my, but you know what? My favorite thing to eat in Italy was the sandwiches. Oh, yeah. The sandwiches. They got yeah. good bread. They have good bread. Oh, my God. I'm an English Fresh teacher. Sandwiches. They got good bread. Girl I mean, bye. people don't talk about sandwiches, but let me tell you. Sandwiches are delicious if they're made proper. That's a serious it, thing. It's, it is. That's a serious so, thing. They really, oh. they know how to do proper, nice sandwiches. Um, I wasn't in the South. The South is where, like, the pizza is and stuff. I did the I don't Northern pizza. part. I don't pizza. No. But. But, um, of course, of course, the gelato, the pasta, and the oh wine. Oh my gosh, I want to go so much. Please if you go. like sandwiches, I will tell you this. Have you been to Amsterdam before? No. Amsterdam is really good for that kind of stuff. Ah. It's like they have really good bread and really good, like, I don't know if they're curing those meats over there uh, and, like, the cheese I over there. I can imagine there, they are. But there's, like, a little bistro about 20 minutes from the airport that I had went to when I went to Amsterdam. I went to the Tulip Festival. Mm. Or just me and my daughter because I love to travel with my children yeah. so I had one with my daughter we went to the Tulip Festival and that was something that we was really enjoying we was really having a bowl in that place and it was nothing oh. like sandwiches and wine and yes. uh, all kinds of other things that's legal in Amsterdam <laughs> child yes. I said okay. Amsterdam be wild I got out. my baby with me <laughs> take it easy <laughs> so it sounds like you've definitely had a little a broad variety of yes. the world a little piece of this a little piece of that that's so important Important. I love it. What is your favorite part about travel? Um, I think it's like, I don't particularly like being in an airplane, okay. but I like Me the too. fact that I can get there so quickly. Yeah. Like, I like the idea that you can literally travel the world in like two weeks if you really try. Yeah. Like, for instance, you can get a round trip 
a, a straight flight ticket from Ghana to New York and you can leave here in the morning and be there in the evening. Yeah. So I really like the idea of getting around the world really quickly mm -hmm. and I really Again, I truly love just eating other people's food. I think that's my favorite thing. Yes. Finding beaches and finding food because I love cooking. I love eating. Mm -hmm. So it's like the first thing that I always do when I go to somebody else's country is look up if they have a food tour. Yeah. Like a, a generic food tour. Not nothing too fancy because sometimes they take you to fancy places. I, I need a street food tour. That's right. Okay. Yeah. I like to see what the locals are eating. Like, mm. what's the local grub? Like, if I lived here, what am I going to be eating every day? Not like go to a really fancy restaurant and get this. No. What are the local people eating? I love eating right. all over the world. Eat everything. I know that's right. Eat everything. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. That's good. That's really good to hear too. So we we all I, I love that too about this. I mean, when you get different different cuisines and different places, mm -hmm. it is just on a whole nother level. I think it's amazing. Like, Before totally. I left um, Philadelphia, I was never, like, I would never eat anything hot. No mm -hmm. hot sauce, no hot peppers. Yeah, me no, too. Nothing but, like, normal black pepper. Yeah. Now that I live in Ghana, you if it's to. not a ton of hot pepper yeah. or some pepe or something, and it's like I can't even taste it. I'm like, what are you even cooking? <laughs> so like, what are you even eating? Even before I just made dinner for my husband before I left, it's like I'm mixing some pepe together. I ate some of it before I left. Yeah. It's like traveling and eating in different places will change your taste buds. It, it will change really how you feel about what you eat mm -hmm. and what tastes good. Yep. I was never really a fish eater until I came to Ghana. Right. Like, I, it was just all about chicken. But yeah. now I'm here, it's like, I love fish so much and mm -hmm. seafood. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm greedy. I talk about food all day. <laughs> greedy child. I love it. I love it. I'm telling you. So let's um let's talk a little bit about how you got to Ghana. What brought you here? Oh, okay. As they say, to make a long story short, <laughs> um, I'm a very spiritual person. Okay. Okay, not religious, but spiritual. I'm a very spiritual person. Amen. So from a young age, um, I'll just say I used to have like lots of dreams about like fantastical places and I didn't know where they were and it was just always a fun time when I would be dreaming as a child mm -hmm. and when I came to Ghana it was like I saw the places that I saw in my dream mm. so it's like I think at the age of about 11 or 12 mm -hmm. I grew up in a very big family and we lived in the hood in North Philly and you always felt like you wanted to get away yeah because it's crowded it's people there's no trees mm -hmm. there's you know but it's like around a young age, I just felt my culture. Like I remember having a friend in school and he was from Nigeria. He was my first Nigerian friend. His name was Awudumi. <laughs> and I remember him just being, I always thought he was very beautiful, 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 dark skin. He used to always talk about how his mom moved him from Nigeria and he hated living in America. Wow. And. It kind of sparked my interest some. So I started doing like some research about it, even at that young age. So ever since then, I just always wanted to come to Ghana. Okay. So like my first time coming, I believe it was like 2012 or 2013, I came here with my son. Mm -hmm. And once I got here, I just felt like I was home. Like mm -hmm. I just felt like I was home. Mm -hmm. There's no other real way to put it. There's no extra fancy words I can put on it. It's just the way you feel when you walk in your house and you're comfortable mm -hmm. and you're peaceful yeah. and you just feel mm -hmm. like that's true. I can take my shoes off. That's right. And from the moment I got here, I always feel that. Mm -hmm. So from that moment when I first came, I made the decision literally when I got off the plane. I said, I have to live here. Mm -hmm. I told my son, he was like, are you sure? I said, yes. I said, I have to live here, yeah. period. That's it. I love it here. That's it. That's it. That's, that's, that's beautiful. So I know that you're doing a lot of amazing things here. And she is a fashion designer. Bing. Yeah. And amongst other things, you also sell other products and mm -hmm. everything. So why don't you tell us a little bit about oh, what fabulous. you do? Oh, fabulous. Talk about me. Why yeah. not? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've been a, I've, I've had my own business for about 23, 24 years, yeah. and it's always been based on authentic African items. I started by selling shea butter a long time ago. I started, okay. my business originally started with selling raw shea butter okay. and raw black soap. Wow. And it progressed from selling shea butter 
to mix in my own mixtures of shea butter with different essential oils because I do like things natural and organic. Yeah. And as you know, when you're in Ghana, you're right here. Everything is natural. Everything is gorgeous. Absolutely. Um, when I came into fashion, I haven't been to fashion school. It's a gift. I believe everybody has a gift. That's right. My mom used to be a seamstress. She used to uh, sew our clothes for us. Mm -hmm. And she sewed, She showed me how to sew. I'll never forget the day my mom showed me how to sew. One lesson. She said, Lorraine, don't be talking about my government name. She said, Lorraine, I'm going to show you. And she says, if you can sew a straight line, mm -hmm. you can make anything. Wow. And she put a piece of fabric under there, and she said, put your foot there, and she sewed a straight line. And she sat me down, and I sewed a straight line. She said, if you can do that, you can make anything you want. Wow. And then she said, get out of here and go wash the dishes. <laughs> and I said, man, I wanted to do more. Uh -huh. But that sparked my interest because she used to make clothes for us. She used to make clothes for other people. And I would watch her sew and just pick it up so easily. Uh -huh. So my fashion brand is basically and specifically rooted in authentic Ghana fabric. I do not use Chinese fabric okay. when it comes to African print. Okay. I'm not talking about, you know, I need some rayon, I need some silk. Right. I do not use Chinese fabric. I do not use uh, uh, wherever it comes from. It has to be made here, produced here, or some type of authentic African print. Okay. I have um, friends who print fabric in Mali, uh -huh. Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, those countries, I will okay. use their authentic yeah. fabric. Okay. Um, I love to make things that women can wear. Mm -hmm. I love to look at really avant-garde things, but I like to make beautiful things, such as what I have on. Y'all can get know. this on our website. Jazara Fashion Alchemy. <laughs> She's the plug. Yes. Um, so I uh, am a fashion designer. And then when I got married, because I'm married to a Ghanaian, mm -hmm. um, he makes leather everything. He makes leather bags, leather wallets, leather shoes, shoes I have on, the bag is on the ground, mm -hmm. um, the earrings is on my ears. Mm -hmm. um, so when we got married, we just meshed all of that together. So now my fashion brand includes the clothing, the bags, the jewelry, the shoes. So just everything you need to be fabulous, you can get from me, JazaraFashionAlchemy.com. That right. is the name of the company. Uh -huh. And um, I just love it. I, I like the idea that I'm promoting authentic Ghana. That's my main focus, things that are made in Ghana for people to understand that Ghana things are luxury. This is a luxe brand. This is not cheap. It's very well-made fabric. Mm -hmm. I have things I've made literally 16, 17 years ago that you can't tell because the fabric doesn't fade like that. Right. It stays, it's beautiful, excellent it's quality amazing. fabric. Um, so, and I love making things. I love doing fashion shows, curating them, uh, being a part of them, sitting around watching them. Mm -hmm. So those are my two main things that I do here in Ghana because I still do it for my customers worldwide. I have customers all over, customers and clients all over, all the, over the world. world. I make yeah. waist beads, I make jewelry. I just like to create things. Yes. I like to create with my hands. It keeps me busy, it keeps my mind feeling good that's right it makes me feel good inside that is beautiful Kudos. beautiful what what advice would you give to somebody that's moving to Ghana and especially that has dreams to be an entrepreneur because so many of us in the diaspora we want to come here we're like we're gonna open our own business we're gonna do our own thing how difficult it was that to do um, what would you say to them the first thing that I would advise is to make sure that you save some money. Mm -hmm. Like people have a very bad misconception that, oh, I'm black American, I'm gonna to come to Ghana, people gonna start handing me things on a silver platter. They're not. No. Nobody is getting anything handed to them. Mm -hmm. You can't come here with a little bit of money and think all of a sudden, your brand is going to blow up because I'll tell you right now, Ghana, one thing I love about Ghana, this is an entrepreneur business commerce location. Mm -hmm. Jokers is work and businesses are <laughs> popping. Right. People are not looking to give their CV and get a job. People are trying to start businesses here. Absolutely. They are serious about business here. Yeah. Okay. Whether it's a small watch a business or whether it's a huge business like whoever owns this beautiful place that we are sitting at now. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I would advise someone to do is make sure you save enough money to come. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have a good idea and a good plan of 
what it is that you do want to present mm -hmm. when you move here. Mm -hmm. Do your research about what sells here. Do your research. See, you know, let's say you let's say you're you're a gardener do a research can you do your business here can you thrive here doing that or is that something that's not going to be good for you to do or it might not be as easy but saving research your money is so important. it is yeah. and, and doing your research makes a big difference i would say the the most thing that i learned once i came here was oh how to move your money around. Oh yeah. How to move your money around. You need to get a very good idea of how to get your money from America That's to Ghana so and back good. again. Wow, guys. Because it's not easy it's sometimes. Not. Okay. And I don't think I've heard anybody talk about that before, and it is really a thing. It's a real live thing, especially when you are in business, and your business is based in another country, yep. and you're receiving money from another country, and you want to use your money here. Yep. Sometimes it's not as easy as just going to the ATM. Right. Cards getting blocked. Western <laughs> Union is blocked. So true. World Remit doesn't work. Yep. You need to really know the financial channels yeah. so that you can do business properly. And get yourself, you know, get yourself legit here so that you're not just, you know, it's not like hustle and flow. Like, get legit here. Get your papers in order. Yeah. Make yeah. sure that you have yeah. things legit so that you can properly run your business. Mm -hmm. Because I definitely believe that, once again, uh, Ghana is an entrepreneur location. If you have a business and you're trying to move here to Ghana, that's the ticket. Yeah. Don't have it in your mind that you're about to get your resume and I'm going to get a job downtown. You will be salty. Old school. Yeah. Show your age. You're about to be salty. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Get a business. Yeah. Come to Ghana. That's and right. also give yourself an opportunity to maybe support another business that's already yeah, here. Absolutely. Because there are a lot of diasporans here and there are a lot of Ghanaians here that need support. Maybe if you were looking for work or looking for a job, you could support a business that's already that's here. That's true. Yeah. So, you know. Uh, jump in on what they're doing and help yeah. out and, and be a part, partner with people. Mm-hmm. Yes. Nobody has to reinvent the wheel. Somebody could already be here doing exactly what you're doing and you could just partner with them. That's Right. and piggyback off Very of them good. and learn from them. I've learned Very so much good. from my husband about getting my business together and paperwork and getting things in like real order yeah. here in Ghana. Yeah. Because one thing you have to understand is if you're going to move to Ghana, you're here now. Yes. You can't think in U.S. dollars. That's you right. can't think like that. You have to think, I got CDs. Mm -hmm. I got that. I got mm -hmm. new. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> all of these things. You got to think about that. Certainly. Once you figure it out, you'll be all right. Certainly. Certainly. What has Ghana taught you? Patience. Just, I, 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 there are many, many things that, that, that made me say patience first, but the main thing is Ghanaians are very patient and very kind. There are things here that could drive you crazy very easily, such as lights going off mm -hmm. when you're not ready for lights to go off. Your water stops flowing. Mm -hmm. um, certain things when it comes to business, it moves rather slowly. Mm -hmm. The business process, if you're trying to like get papers done and something like that, that four to six weeks that is even forever in America yeah. might be three to four or five months here. You know, some things take a long time yes. so you have to be patient I think patience if you can just understand how things work here and really live in Ghana when I say that I mean like people have to put their mindset in that's, Ghana that's right be like present you, here be like, present here yeah. like don't always compare it to whatever country you're coming from you know UK because right. Ghana has so many people from everywhere yeah don't compare it to oh well if I was in the UK you're not in the UK honey <laughs> you're in Accra yeah you're going to sit here on this bench for at least six hours and yeah. deal with your business <laughs> and when it's over go get yourself some watch and some water exactly, okay yeah so I would definitely say it's taught me a lot of pain patience mm -hmm. um, things that used to bother me don't bother me anymore like if the lights go off mm -hmm. um, you just be patient it's like I know what to do now I don't panic I know oh my gosh yeah I know what to do right. guess what I do when the lights go off I go to the beach because yeah. the beach don't need lights That's right. I go to the beach I'm not hot the wind is blowing I relax I call did the lights come back on yet did yeah. the lights come back on yet mm -hmm. but um just patience and kind of humility mm -hmm. because as you see people working hard as blank 
That's like so these true. ladies and dudes is working That's, hard. Yes, they do. It's an entrepreneur location, but some of the jobs, you know, people may not see it as savory for them. Yeah. And these ladies is in the street, water on their head, 10, 11, 12 hours out the day, Trocho drivers hanging out the side of the car, <laughs> 10, 11, 12 hours of the day smelling like oops. <laughs> and it's like, but they have to do that. It's That's like, true. you know, I, 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 I humble myself to that. Like I respect them a lot. I respect like the normal workers mm -hmm. in Ghana because you never know where, where your life gonna take you. I, I, I'm not above yeah. throwing some water on my head if I gotta do it uh, at all. So at it's all. like it, it teaches you. Yeah. It teaches you humility. Yeah, that's so. And just the live energy life, the and they're people. happy and they're dancing yeah. and they're enjoying life. The lady was in the street. It's a hundred, literally a hundred and three <laughs> degrees last week, and she trying to sell this water. And she and her little girlfriend dancing in the street. <laughs> I'm in the car, windows up in the Uber with an attitude like it's hot. <laughs> I need some water. And, and it's like they, they just have a way Yes. that I like to try to adopt it too, to just relax. And you're in the moment. Mm -hmm. This is what you got to do. Yeah. Relax, right. chill. Yeah. It's all good. That's true. That's cool. true. What an awesome lesson to learn um, and also to teach others. And we're here teaching you um, that lesson to be patient and just to kind of go with it. Life continues no matter what bad is happening, what good is happening. Life continues to go on and we have to just to learn to go with it mm -hmm. sometimes. Yeah, it's true. It's yeah. very true. So I have a game that we will play. I don't game. <laughs> Games people play. Yes, this is 15 questions and this Oh, she opened a book. Let's I go. Did. I'm a teacher too. I do a whole lot of notes. I'm a teacher too. I like when people open books. That's right, I do, because I have my 15 questions created specifically for you. I'm ready. And they are quick questions, so they're meant to, you don't have to give it a whole lot of thought, just the first thing that oh, comes good. to your mind, this good. or that, or yes or no type of thing. Oh, fabulous, I'm into yeah. it. Yeah, so I'm if you're ready, it. we're gonna play 15 questions. 15 questions. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> that was me doing a little jingle for 15 questions. <laughs> Yo, that's so dope. You know what, okay, let's play 15 questions first, but I have something else to add about her that we didn't talk about. We didn't, don't even worry about it, we're gonna be Girl, right with you. we're gonna let's get it. Get it. Silence, God. <laughs> okay. How did we even miss that? I don't know. Until I, I started idea. singing, I forgot. Uh -huh. <laughs> so anyway, okay. Ready? Go. Fufu or Banku? Fufu. Early riser or early sleeper? Both. Okay. Okay. Feel you. Sweet things or sour things? Sweets. Okay. Pets, yes or no? Yes. Okay. R&B or hip hop? R&B. <laughs> Solo travel, yes or no? Yes. <sighs> Netflix and chill or night out? Netflix and chill. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> just trying to be bothered. Absolutely, I feel you. <laughs> Pants or skirts? Skirts. Okay. As I sit here in a jumpsuit. <laughs> As I sit here in this Jazar fest now, it could be jumpsuit. <laughs> Jump calm, but really skirts. Big ones. Big okay. giant ones. Yeah, I do. Me too. <laughs> Sunshine or moonlight? Moonlight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moonlight. Ice cream or cake? Cake. Ice cream is. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Airbnb or hotel? I have never been in an Airbnb before. <gasps> I've never been in an Airbnb wow. before, so I have to say hotel. I say hotel. Wow, okay. Hot or cold? Hot. Mm -hmm. Hiking or swimming? Hiking. Okay. Shopping online or in store? Online. Leave me alone. Yay. <laughs> Do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. How do you feel about that? True. Or not true. I kind of like it. Okay. I kind of like it because um, me myself, I'm kind of a do my own thing kind of person. Mhm. Mm and I feel like maybe if I'm not purposely trying to lead people, I'm always trying to lead myself. Mhm. Mm so if I'm trying to lead myself, I just do it on my own. If you want to see what I did, it's back there. Yeah. I got some footprints you can follow if you want to. I'm not Jesus. Don't get it started. We're in Ghana. Oh, Lord. But they that's beautiful. That is, that is really beautiful because it's true. It's like you just live your life mm. and whatever you leave, you know, of course, living it intentionally is is 
suggested, I think. But you know, when you live it intentionally, there will be things and there will be a trail that people can follow and will want to follow. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. Good. So, we didn't talk about the fact. <laughs> Why am I cranking up? My fellow, <laughs> my fellow singer here. This girl's a singer, honey. She has sang. Uh, do you have music? Do you tell us okay, about so your singing career? My singing career is pretty much. I don't have like I don't have any records to reference to y'all because most of my things I'm um, featured on other people's albums, okay. or I do like work with other people. I don't have my own albums out there, but I am uh, a lover of music. I have been traveling the world also. The way my fashion shows go is my fashion shows always come with a band. So I have a live band here. Okay. And in maybe, like I literally have a band in like four or five different countries. Okay. So if I have a fashion show, my band and I are performing, and then at the end of the show, that's when you get the fashion show. And I will perform while the girls are walking up and down the runway. Mm -hmm. um, I also play bass. Um, I do a lot of writing for other people, so it's like my music background is singing, mm -hmm. playing the bass, as well as writing for other artists. Wow. Because I definitely don't always need to be in a spotlight, mm -hmm. but very similar to the things that Prince used to talk about, I can write a song like every day with no problem. Wow. So, so writing knowledge. is something I love to do for other people. So I write something and pass it on off. Um, that's that's and, a talent. Live writing oh, is not you. easy. I'm a writer and I, I actually struggle with it though. Like I wouldn't say that I'm just a natural writer. Mm -hmm. It takes effort. I enjoy it, but it's, it's definitely, it takes it, effort it, for it me. It can get like that sometimes. For me, it's mm -hmm. like, I don't know, if I sit here for like two seconds, I already thought of three songs when I saw the Christmas tree. I didn't know the Christmas wow. tree was sitting there. A whole, whole entire song about you don't know it's Christmas. Uh -huh. I'm going to go home and write it down. <laughs> you and should. On top of my... um. Fashion shows and on top of the where I sing it. Um, I also do a lot of hosting. I do a lot of hosting here in Ghana um, Plug time. I'll also be hosting the Tangola festival this okay. year okay. It's a big festival that happens here in Ghana. It's December the 26th okay. and I shall be your host MC delicious All right. um, It's gonna be fabulous. I don't even remember where it is in East Lagoon, maybe <laughs> Crystal Park something like that Look it up uh -huh. um, I love to host shows because it gives me opportunity to have a microphone. Damn. I love a microphone phone mm -hmm. I love people mm -hmm. when I'm on a microphone not in general I mean I love y'all but yes I'm, I, I'm a cancer to crab so I prefer to be kind of in the shell cancer. but when I eh, 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 yes. please be advised that's it but um <laughs> I, I do love this well we are so happy to have you today we're Thank so, you so glad that fun. you stopped by to talk to us this was uh-huh <laughs> yes it was and tell us where to my um my followers, my viewers, that where they can find you. Oh, fabulous! Should so, I thank y'all so much. This has been super fabulous and fun. Fabulous and fun. You can find me. I am Jazara Fashion Alchemy on Instagram. Um, my YouTube is Jazara the Jewel, and my husband's leather brand, which is Papa B Designs. Uh, that's also on Instagram, but Jazar Fashion Alchemy is the name of my brand. Um, again, we are a luxury beautiful international Ghana based fashion brand and I enjoy it and I love it and I really thank y'all for having me today y'all yes. cute I can see you in the spirit <laughs> I said I'm cancer the crap I have spirit powers that's real Amen. talk don't, don't disrespect me don't exactly. disrespect me I promise exactly. you that's for a whole nother interview <laughs> one of these days well thank you for being here you guys make sure thank you check you. her out she has some amazing 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 products so please make sure you check her out i owe her a product that i'm supposed to be getting real soon oh. and don't play because i haven't forgotten list is on the list <laughs> and i gotta make a whole new list of more things so support her please and thank you for, as always make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed i see you out there watching Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell for notifications so that you are always the first to be notified when I post. And we will see you next time. Peace. Like and subscribe. <laughs> now I believe I can be all I dream.